Good afternoon and thank you. We have had a very deep session just now, looking at a variety of issues with respect to DPI and how it could be popularized and adopted in different parts of the world. As you know that currently I am involved in establishing what we call in India the latest digital public infrastructure. And all throughout my working career, my focus had always been on the implementation. So I would sort of anchor my brief onto the business case of DPI from the anchoring on what we are doing in ONDC and some of the other DPI involvement that I've had because I can see that I'm there to shift the gear of the discussion <laughs> because with the business case and just after this we have a fantastic panel coming together building further on the whole economic case, you know, marrying them together, how it can really make difference to uh, the economy as such, the industry as such. Because unless it is going to benefit the end users, which could be the users like you and I on one side, or it could be business users with respect to their business agenda, all this will come to a knot and will become nice reports that get published and bound and kept somewhere in the top. I'm sure that all of us are familiar with many such reports, you know, which are kept for show in our, you know, in our almaras. So that's why uh, I think the, I'm just going to setting the stage for, you know, the larger discussion on the economic agenda. I have a way of looking at this whole thing in a story format. You know, what we in this Mother Earth has seven continents. And what we are talking about is creation of the eighth continent, the digital continent. I'm sure we are all familiar with how the continents when were discovered and managed and developed and controlled in the past. When a new continent was discovered, the, discover, the entities who had the wherewithal to discover them created East India companies. What do I mean by East India companies? Because these enterprises are established with primarily with the interest of the few shareholders. And these companies consciously work towards exploiting those continents to maximize the interest of those shareholders. And any industries that came in line or any business that came in line or any enterprising group that came in line in, maxim in meeting this objective of maximizing the interest of these enterprises were brutally in those days destroyed or disabled. That is what we are seeing in the digital world today. While the digital world started as a very democratic place, whether it is the, the, the websites that we all look at or the email that we use, had provided equal opportunity for everybody to interact with the others and succeed based on their own capability and not based on the financial power of their ability to hold something in their hands, control in their hands. But unfortunately, when they come to the digital, con digital world, it has become different. Where there is transaction, where there's money, where there's exchange of goods and services. So while I will say ONDC, Open Net for Digital Commerce, it is not just about consumer products being sold. So that's why I will see the, 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 op the idea of an open network that we are looking, is to make the digital rails and highways in this digital continent on the building on which different enterprises can have their own businesses. Somebody may set up a national business of passenger transport. Somebody may decide to set up hotels in the side of the, you know, the, the, the highways. 
Somebody may decide to set up more stations. So each of them contributes. They all nicely stitch together to improve the usability and relevance to the users. And the success of anybody is a function of how well they do and how relevant what they are doing and not any other element. So that is the idea of an open network. So like I said, it is not just, so what is the biggest ambition that I foresee in, in this journey where we just started? Is that every product or service which is catalogable will be available in this open network using an open protocol. And there will be different kind of enterprises who will establish user interfaces to help their relevant kind of users to buy what is relevant. It gives humongous possibilities for innovation, specialization and business expansion. That is the business and economic case for open network that will really be adopted if demonstrated upon. Just give, let's look at a couple of examples from the, what we are doing here itself. So I'll take some example from big companies and small companies. Because it has to be relevant for everybody. It cannot be only for the relevant. Let's look at you who are all familiar with the company Unilever. In India, we call it Hindustan Unilever. They realize, and I'm, whatever I'm saying is all public information already, so I'm not taste, you know, taking anybody's thunder, stealing anybody's thunder or revealing any trade secrets. Just come in news. So they realize that the current way of transformation in the e-commerce or even modern commerce is in a way significantly impacting their access, their influence through the traditional channel, what we call Kirana Network, or what some of you abroad may call mom and pop shop, which in the end is affecting fun, of course, their business interest, of course, and also affecting the extent of reach at more economic value to a larger cross-section. Because the current platform-centric approach will try to maximize the interest of their shareholders. And they believe that platform-centric approach believe that they have to do everything by themselves. So when you're trying to do everything by themselves, you're not efficient in everything. And you will end up dropping things are which are not relevant. But in a, if you enable everybody to participate, participate, relevance would be, different parties will have different relevance. For example, a small Kirana shop, mom and pop shop, if he is able to be discovered by these modern you know, youngsters who will only look at anything digital and say that he want a Dow soap or a Pale biscuit, and he can be discovered, and, and he can send this bichu to get it delivered. It's a more, more efficient way of doing, and it adds to his business proposition. It adds to reach of, he can be anywhere, even the smallest village, because we have put the digital, you know, the, the highways there. So these kind of possibilities, that's why they said, I am going to create a digital infrastructure to help the small people to be digitally visible. So they have made a statement that probably in one or two years' time, they will make millions of Kirana stores part of this digital world with equal opportunity as anybody else who can arrange to have a central warehouse when from where people will go and deliver on bike. Or it could be somebody different mod. I mean, these kind of things create different models. Look at probably you would have seen um, somebody like Ola. It's a car hailing system, and they know that the open network is also bringing competition in car hailing, which I'm sure from a very limited point of view may not be something very exciting, but they realize that there is creating humongous business opportunity. So they said, okay, now I can now confidently offer to my clients who are coming for car hailing a lot of other products, maybe starting with food. Tomorrow, probably I will arrange fashion, grocery, everything. So his offering become diverse. While there might be squeeze on the possibility, rent-seeking capability because of concentration, but it gives him enormous opportunities. So 
some people figure it out early, some people figure it out late. But this, and if you look at somebody like, um, you know, a small, you know, my favorite thing is uh, Kanchipuram Sari Weaver coming from small town in Tamil Nadu. What is her option today of digitization is that, you know, he can go and tie, she can go and tie up with any large established players. They will determine how she should sell because she cannot have the other building block. She doesn't have the ability uh, to even create a good catalog. She doesn't have the ability to sort of have a contract with a logistics player. She doesn't have the warehousing capability in multiple cities. So the only thing is to surrender herself to an established player who will maximize their interest. Whereas now in an open network, suddenly building blocks come in pieces nicely stitched together. First of all, there would be enormous amount of agencies who's now, who will help her to digitize her catalog because they know that they can make a difference because a common pool of market will be available for her as much as to a very established player. She can get an assistance to make this catalog visible on the network through some small aggregator in the town. And she can, on the network, get a logistics provider who will pick it up from Kanjiburam and make it available in Delhi. And with the volume coming up, probably she would see somebody from Delhi providing warehouse as a service. Including, she can now think about sending a bulk to Delhi with a local service provider unbundling and packaging it small pieces. So, you know, the cases I am trying to tell you is the power of an open network to explore the level of activities at every segment of the society. And that is a power. And here, I'm just trying to build on uh, the earlier uh, the, 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 the panel and especially what Pyle was saying at the end. Is that one is conceptual level. Second, that's why if you look at, we took a point of view, you saw whether it is in COVID or whether it is in ONDC, what we said, the whole, the, 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 the protocol, everything is open source. Anybody can take it and please. We said just make it CCND, what we call it open source, creative common CCND, that's just recognize that we did you help and how you want to do it is your choice. But that will not, but you need a lot more. Taking from what um, Suhail and uh, Paul were saying, it is that will not help a practical implementation. So you need implementation detailing, support and playbook, because the struggle is in detail. The struggle is in implementation. That is a lot of hand-holding support needed. So money alone will not help. Technical assistance cannot be just some consulting ideas. Technical help, when it comes to, is all about how to implement in the practical challenges. Because whenever a new DPI comes, whether I remember I was enrolled in Aadhaar, I was enrolled in Govind, I'm now in a new... Conceptually, it's a very powerful idea. That's why it will succeed. Second thing is when you go around first time implementation, there's a humongous amount of learning that has to come on practical implementation issues. And if there is a way to consolidate all of them and make it available, you can available, uh, avoid a significant amount of duplication. And then this will become stronger business cases for those countries to adopt. And they'll feel confident that it is coming especially I like the model that was being discussed here, is that with a very definite implementation support coming from people who are good at implementation, not policy making, not regulation, not consulting, but in implementation. When the whole thing gets packed together as a package, then it gets adoption. And that is why I think the, the model that got discussed uh, make it a very powerful idea in terms of possible adoption. And that is where I believe that um, we are collectively able to get an implementable business case for them to adopt. Because everything else, because I, mean, I remember I've sort of in the past 10, 15 years, I had sort of with the support of the developmental agencies like World Bank and ADB and Gates Foundation and countries in digital thing, I've had the opportunity to sort of work on a number of these kind of 
digital transformation ideas. And each of these places, the question that ca came was, what is the agenda that is being pushed? Who is pushing the agenda? What is the implementation plan which is very neutral and fair? And how does it make sense in the local context? Can you help to build a business gain for a faster adoption? If we are able to do that, the adoption will be a, a lot faster. And that's like the, you know, the big message I want to sort of give in the, in the short while. And I'm sure that the, you know, the, the panel that come will go a lot deeper in, in sort of looking at the uh, economic rationale and case for adoption and not a conceptual understanding of the possible change that can be made. Thank you.